All right, so the agenda, um, just real quick overview here. Uh, talk about me for a minute. Um, talk about the design event overview. Uh, hopefully most of you uh, know this by the communications that we've sent out previously. Uh, then we'll spend a lot of time on the engineering product development cycle and scoring and how they tie together. Uh, a little bit of time on subsystems um, in some areas that uh, Need additional focus. A few tips for success. Uh, there's some statistics on this year's virtual design event. Uh, we'll talk 2021 Baja SA four wheel drive. Um, uh, we'll congratulate some people on awards for the design evaluations and then there should be uh, plenty of time at the end for questions. So with that, about me. So uh, my name is Jason Fields. I'm a senior vehicle architect with Polaris Industries. Uh, I've been there for uh, a while. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, after high school, I, I joined the United States Marine Corps. Um, spent four years in the Marine Corps, uh, served my country, and I was in engineering um, in the Marine Corps. I, I did civil engineering type stuff. Uh, drafting and surveying, uh, mostly worked in an engineering battalion or engineering company uh, based on the location. Uh, after the Marine Corps, um, I went to South Dakota School of Mines Technology. Uh, if you were in Amory's presentation for CBT stuff a few minutes ago, uh, you, you may have heard him talk about that. Uh, Amory and I were uh, Obviously, classmates and Ba teammates. Uh, he um, he was a team captain for our our team uh, the year after I was. So he was my sidekick uh, for for a long time, and now we work together, uh, good friends. So if you weren't able to listen to Amory's presentation on CVT um, design engineering, uh, it, it was recorded. So. I think SA is going to um, be posting those. Uh, you went into a lot of depth, uh, a lot of insider tips and tricks. So um, just a shout out to him because uh, that, that's information that is a shortcut, we'll say, to successful CVT design. And, and uh, it's a lot of experience that uh, he, he gave you guys in, in about an hour. Um, I spent uh, my entire time at school working on Baja from uh, pretty much the time I set foot on campus uh, was a freshman until when I when I graduated. Uh, I, I spent working on Baja um, and continue to work on Baja. So it's been a, a um, quite quite a long time now that I've been working on Baja involved in one way or another. Um, so seen um, a lot of competitions, a lot of cars, talked to a lot of students. Uh, I've been at Polaris since 2009, um, started in our engineering development program. And I spent, um, you know, various roles within off-road vehicle and the team, uh, mostly in engine integration, 2011, 2016. Uh, and then I was a manager in that, that same group, uh, um, focused on intake, exhaust and thermal. Um, for a couple of years there. And, uh, now I'm a senior vehicle architect for Ranger. Um, I'd say it's similar to a uh, automotive chief engineer if uh, you don't know what a vehicle architect is. Um, basically a technical lead for uh, vehicle projects or vehicle platforms. Uh, I've been leading the design event uh, since I've been judging since I graduated, basically first year out of college, was able to support Baja as a judge and then uh, been leading the design events since 2012. Um, and this kind of current process has been going on since around that time. All right, so this is a slide that hopefully everyone knows um, a thing or two about already. Um, and, and just a quick 
side note, if you have questions, please uh, type in the chat window and I'll try to address them as they come or um, uh, at the end if uh, yeah, they're not in the content. So uh, the timing, uh, as, as you're probably aware of, it's 20 minutes for the design evaluation. Um, and uh, it's essentially a couple minutes for vehicle overview and introduction. So um, that, that, that time is really to, to tell the judges of who you are, what, um, tell them about your, you know, the, the people on the team, introduce the students and the judges um, and work out, you know, my name is Jason Fields. I'm going to be the Bay leader. Your name is, you know, John Doe or whatever. You're going to be um, talking about driveline um, and, and just making sure that we know what, what your team is about, uh, vehicle goals. Uh, we'll get into that more in detail later. Um, and then really the, the meat and potatoes of it is that 18 minutes of one-on-one -on -one discussions with, uh, with the judges. So um, and, and that one-on-one -on -one could be one on however many students you have working on that, that area, um, pretty straightforward. Scheduling, this is just make sure you're on time early. Um, and it, if you have a conflict, um, this goes for kind of next year, just an FYI, we do is, is you know, we try hard to accommodate uh, scheduling conflicts um, with uh, tech or whatever, car issues, et cetera. So if you have an, a conflict, let us know as soon as you can and we'll try to reschedule and get you in. We want to make sure that you guys are getting experience. Um, there's four judges per bay. Uh, the bay leader is judging overall package. Slash system integration. We'll get into the details about that. We'll be a chassis and ergo judge, a drivetrain judge, and a suspension steering and brake judge. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully, uh, you all knew that. Um, the evaluation method, I'm not going to read through this, um, but this is basically what's stated in the rules and on score sheets and um, all over the place to make sure that you guys know. Um, you know, how you're being judged. It's probably um, not as clear in those words as I'm going to make it uh, throughout this presentation. So hopefully uh, you understand this a bit better after. All right, so <clears throat> Uh, this slide is um, probably the most important thing that I'm going to tell you um, because this is how you're being evaluated. This is what we hope you to learn. Uh, this is connects to the success of not only your design event, but also uh, your success in, in Baja SAE. So, um, we are judging uh, students and teams on the execution of the engineering product development cycle. And, and the first point I want to make is why. Why are we judging on that? And the main reason is if you're successful at executing this process, you're going to be successful in uh, you know, engineering your by SA car. And this is what is used, or some form of this is what's used in pretty much all product development um, out in, in the real world. So um, we're not really critiquing you on kind of the details of the things that you picked or about what you did right or wrong. We're, we're judging based on the execution of this cycle. And that's a really important note, and hopefully you guys get the idea as we as we go through this that um, you're getting scored on basically effort, and the the better that you're able to execute this, the more successful you are, and that's why the scores should be correlated. 
Um, so at the beginning, uh, define requirements. Um, we'll get into the details on, on each of the one of these on, on the next slide, but uh, just go, go through the percentages here on this slide. Uh, define requirements, 5% of the points, and that 5% in the percentages uh, broken up here are really just based on time and effort. Um, it's not based on importance, because if it was based on importance, then define requirements would be most of the points. Um, if you don't have good requirements, you don't have a goal, uh, then you're kind of just doing stuff. So um, that first top level, uh, we've called it specs in the past, Amory touched on this as well. Uh, what we wanna make sure that uh, we're clarifying going forward is <clears throat> these are quantitative goals uh, or, or engineering requirements, and it's not a resultant. These are the, this is what you wanna do with the vehicle. Um, I'll get into the details on the next slide here. Uh, the next part is R&D, that's also worth 5%, uh, design CAD worth 10%, uh, the data collection for analysis worth 15, and the next three sections are worth 20 each. So analysis, the uh, calculations of CE, testing validation, correlation of analysis testing, and then other, which is um, primarily manufacturer ability and serviceability uh, is another 5%. And each one of the subsystems is broken down in the same way. So what that means is it doesn't matter if you're designing the suspension system or the drivetrain, four wheel drive, or the overall vehicle, um, we're judging in the same way and the percentage breakdown is the same. So each one of those score sheets that, that, that you've seen posted uh, has it broken down in, in the same way. All right, so a little bit more detail on each one of those things I just went through. So the first one, define requirements. So this is, what we're looking for is, is vehicle level all the way down to component level and a cascade of requirements. So you start off with a vehicle level goal and that vehicle level goal, we'll say top level, customer facing maybe um, something like we want to win the acceleration event. Okay, so you start off with want to win the acceleration event. Well, what does that take? You need a time, right? A time for the 100 foot acceleration. So magical time will say it's got to be two seconds or something. What does it take to actually meet that? Well, in the most basic principles, um, force equals mass times acceleration. So, you know, <clears throat> how do you maximize the force um, and minimize the mass to get the maximum acceleration? So, um, <clears throat> that's a, a super easy example. Uh, maybe your, your top goal is reliability. Maybe you want to make sure that the the vehicle lasts um, three endurance races or uh, three endurance races in all the dynamic events. And, and you know this based on, you know, like your previous history and um, uh, whatever. So there's, there is, a, you know, what is the goal and like, what are the measurements? How do you know that you got to that goal? Is, is the important part of this is it's gotta be specific and measurable. So um, the next piece, R&D. So the R&D part is about um, why did you choose the design option selected? It's also could be, you know, learning more about that design option as Amy mentioned in the CVD presentation. So uh, some examples of R&D is 
So, uh, you know, maybe it's a four wheel drive system, right? That there's a lot of R&D that's, that's being done on four wheel drive in Baja because uh, a bunch of teams are doing it or trying to do it um, for this year and for next year and then um, be required the following year. So uh, <clears throat> there's lots of options out there on, on four wheel drive. So this piece is what are the pros and cons of each one of those options? How did it affect the other systems and how to integrate to the vehicle? <clears throat> this could be decision matrices, some sort of trade-off analysis, uh, development testing. Um, it could be just, you know, the any sort of research you did, learning about the, the components or subsystems you selected. Uh, the next one, <clears throat> Design CAD is really straightforward. Um, that doesn't mean it's little work, but it's straightforward on, on how to get um, points out of this one. We're looking for a detailed CAD models. And the reason we're looking for detailed CAD models is because that's what's expected in, in real engineering. Uh, there's nothing that we do at Polaris that doesn't have a CAD model. Um, you know, full vehicles with full cab models, including all the hardware, <coughs> uh, all the hardware and um, all of the um, routings. Uh, just one uh, quick stop. Is everybody seeing my screen? Just got a chat that, um, Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so um, this one, design CAD should be a check the box. So this is all about doing uh, the work uh, to get this done. So the, from a vehicle level, like I said, it's, it's all components, including hardware and routings and um, you know, everything that it takes to build your car. Because uh, again, that's what expected in 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 real life um, engineering, uh, and we want clean models, um, including rounds and chamfers and draft, and you know what those components are really going to look like when you manufacture them. Not not simplified models um, with with uh, excuse me without the details. Um, The uh, next part is um, for chassis. This is, I, I wanted to point this one out because I've seen it too many times. I did it myself when I was a student. The chassis is simply uh, tubes. There's no brackets, there's no tabs, there's no you know, integration of all the parts. It's really just like the required members uh, are there and that's it. Um, that's not, that's not enough, right? That's from, a, from memory as a student, you know, those are the areas that um, we had issues from a manufacturing perspective. Um, and in, in, in areas that really didn't meet the expectations that we had going in. So make sure it's all designed um, in CAD. Uh, data collection for analysis. This is uh, an area that can be really challenging for students. Um, <clears throat> but as you know, or hopefully know, any analysis is only good as the parameters inputted. So that means uh, garbage in, garbage out, as some people would say it. So if you're just picking a input value out of thin air, say 3G or something like that is you know, some, some things that I've uh, heard from a number of uh, students. Um, <clears throat> but what does that mean? Where does that number come from? And how do you know that's the right number? So <clears throat> any data you can collect to, to verify what you're talking about is helpful. So you don't have any data, haven't built anything, uh, build something, break some parts. Um, but make sure there's some way to measure that. 
Uh, so if you just go break apart and you don't have any way to measure it, um, it's really tough to use that information. Uh, you can sometimes, uh, you know, go on to the next step and do an analysis to understand where, it, you know, when it fails and make some estimations. But um, <clears throat> ultimately, this is a, you know, tough one on, you know, first year teams for sure. Um, because you oftentimes have to build something to measure something. Uh, but uh, don't get, you know, don't, don't overcomplicate this. Um, start with something. And anything that you can collect uh, or measure is going to be helpful for building confidence. <clears throat> the next part, analysis, calculation, C, CAE. So this is where a lot of engineering time is spent um, in the real world because building stuff is expensive. Um, so things are trying to be done virtually as much as possible. <coughs> um, and um, anything that you can predict using an analytical tool is gonna be helpful uh, for that. So. <coughs> This could be kinematics or strength, stress, fatigue, airflow, heat transfer, um, any number of things. Uh, and there's you know, lots of ways to do this. This could be a hand calculation, a spreadsheet, a math CAD code, um, a computer aided engineering tool like um, you know, uh, Find an element analysis software or uh, a multi body dynamic software or uh, computer fluid dynamic software. All of those things, uh, any tools that you can use to measure those kind of engineering uh, parameters. <coughs> um, so I think all in people know what it means. Um, what we want to see is a summary of the results, the parameters inputted, an understanding of the failure modes, and being able to explain the methods. So <clears throat> what does that mean? I, I don't want to see a picture of a CAE um, result without any numbers on it. I don't want to have to go look at the, the box and interpret. It's simple. Um, summary of what the parameters were basically how did you <clears throat> constrain it and how did you load it you know in a stress uh, strength type analysis uh, <clears throat> where those parameters came from which is the data collection for analysis piece in the last section and then like does it make sense you got a number out of it does that number make sense and why does it make sense because Ultimately, that's that's the engineering judgment you're going to need in yeah, in real engineering um, to understand if you know it's not just pretty pictures uh, because you're trying to use this analysis to uh, reduce risk uh, once you actually build something. So don't don't do any of this analysis for your design judges. You should be doing all this for for you for your car to make sure that it lives. Um, it doesn't break or it performs in the way that you want it to perform. <clears throat> uh, the next section, testing validation. So I should have bolded, underlined, and um, highlighted the specific testing with the test plan and goals. Um, we're not giving much credit for driving the car for um, X amount of time and, and that's it, right? Like we want um, something specific um, in mind. Obviously field testing and, you know, mock endurance races and things like that is really important for a durability and reliability um, targets and metrics, but <clears throat> it needs to be, you know, somehow you need to be able to quantify what that meant with some confidence. Um, you know, ultimately you want a reliability and confidence tied to that. 
uh, it's a difficult thing in uh, you know one-off vehicle, but um, it, it it can be done. So um, lab testing is a great thing that that you should be working on because again, as as I mentioned, building stuff is expensive and time-consuming. So if you can do a lab test on a component or a subsystem, that's even better because you don't have to build a whole vehicle and break it. You can just break apart. Uh, <clears throat> and then the last section of that cycle, and I'll, I'll scroll back a sec in a second, is uh, the correlation of analysis and testing. So <clears throat> you did your analysis, you did testing. Now for the next time, you do analysis, you want that, you want to basically put the parameters back into your analysis tool that you got from testing. You measure some stuff, I have more data, put it back into your analysis tool and say, did my analysis tool predict uh, what, I, what I expected or the things that failed, did they fail in the way that my tool, they said they were gonna fail or did it perform in the way that, that I expected it to perform in? <laughs> then the next time you can um, you can be more confident and um, you don't have to do as much testing early in the process. You can rely on that um, analysis because you're confident in it. Um, scrolling back a second. So that's the full cycle, right? That's that's really what we're what we're after. Um, just a reminder on the percentages, you know, you're you should be spending your time in this section because that's where all the points are, and that's where all the work is. <clears throat> the other, other five percent of other, that's manufacturer ability and serviceability, um, and we're we're focused on product development. So it's not that manufacturer ability and serviceability aren't important. It's just their focus is um, product development. And um, those can be trade-offs for performance or something else. So it's, it's not that they're not important, but they may be more important to one team or another. All right, uh, some of these subsystems uh, are pretty straightforward and some of them are not as much. So I'll spend uh, more time on the ones that aren't as straightforward as some of the others. So the first one, vehicle, vehicle level engineering. So overall package and system integration. Um, you know, in my time judging students, you know, this is really the, the you know, the area that students struggle the most <coughs> uh, for a number of reasons. One, it's hard. Uh, vehicle level engineering isn't, isn't easy. It's the most complex level. You're including the, you know, the whole vehicle. Um, and it's the only, uh, <coughs> it's the, it can be the resultant of all the other um, subsystems. So, um, these are vehicle level requirements or an R&D, et cetera. The same process as we went through in the last slide, just at a vehicle level instead of a subsystem level. Um, system integration. So what is system integration? And um, it, it's really how the systems interact. And how do the subsystem play a part in the overall vehicle goals? So <clears throat> this is an area where we can really tell the teams that you know, had a team that's well coordinated with vehicle level goals that are cascaded down to subsystem and component. And the ones where we just had engineers working on their subsystems -sub 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 on their own. So uh, <clears throat> the ones that uh, you know, um, start with vehicle level goals and uh, 
cascaded them into subsystem goals. Well, oiled machine, right? Each subsystem um, is interconnected and contributes to the success of the vehicle. You know, other teams were, you know, they had <clears throat> maybe a system, excuse me, a suspension engineer and a drivetrain engineer that didn't talk at all. And each one of them optimized their system, but neither of them talked to each other. You could end up with a suspension that doesn't actually articulate because uh, the system has you know, the, <coughs> uh, the axles bind up when the suspension is cycled. I'm sure a few people on the phone uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> the next section, chassis and ergonomics. Chassis is pretty straightforward. I think everybody gets what it is, uh, what it includes. Um, this is obviously the safety portion and, and the part that the roll cages keeps you safe, but it's really everything, you know, mounted to it, right? Everything on the vehicle essentially is mounted to this. Uh, <clears throat> the ergonomics portion, this is one where teams have struggled a fair amount in the past uh, because this is engineering ergonomics. This is not how well you fit in the car or how well the judges fit in the car. Um, <clears throat> and that is the constant reminder for judges uh, as well to make sure that you're, we're judging you guys on the same product development cycle as all the other systems. Um, the data collection is different. The analysis is different. You know, data collection might be surveys. Um, the analysis might be uh, uh, ergonomic software like uh, Ramsys or something like that. Um, there's, there's a lot of engineering that goes into, you know, ergonomics in, um, in, in vehicle design. Um, drivetrain. So Amber gave a extremely detailed presentation on CBT and um, I mentioned that earlier. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it much here, uh, but dry train is really separated into kind of the CBT and, and everything else. <coughs> um, the rest of the parts uh, outside of CBT is really focused on durability, reliability, and efficiency, um, and obviously integration. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna talk about any details on any of these subsystems on you know, what to do or uh, what not to do. Um, uh, same thing in suspension steering and brakes. Um, start with the basics here. Um, you know, what does the suspension actually have to do? What does the steering system have to do? What do the brake system have to do? There are hand calculations and spreadsheets or MATLAB codes that, uh, you know, that any vehicle dynamics class or vehicle dynamics handbook can help you, help guide you. <clears throat> but that's where everything starts in suspension steering brakes. If you don't kind of have that basic you know, uh, spreadsheet on a bunch of those parameters, then it becomes really difficult to uh, go to the next step. So don't just jump into a multi-body dynamics um, software without doing basic kinem kinematics in a spreadsheet. And the reason I say that is because it's, um, it's easy to put some numbers in a, in a software, but if you don't understand the engineering behind it, it's, it's also easy to uh, make mistakes based on wrong, wrong assumptions. Um, <clears throat> so the last one on the page is four wheel drive, all wheel drive. So um, next year, the rules are gonna be the same as this year, but the year after that, everybody will be required so 
talk about a little bit more in a couple slides here, but uh, follow the same process as the other systems. So same engineering product development cycle. Uh, the big question that you should be looking at when you think about four wheel drive is um, how does it affect the, re the rest of the vehicle design and the other subsystems? What trade-offs are you making? Like there's definitely positives of four wheel drive. There's also some trade-offs four wheel drive. Make sure you're identifying those, especially as you're choosing the uh, four wheel drive type that you're going after. Um, there was a question on the chat about what is engineering ergonomics? So um, I'm not gonna pretend to be a engineering ergonomics expert, but um, basically uh, the details are, um, uh, you know, human comfort. So there are obviously positions of your body that that are natural and comfortable, and there are positions that are not. Um, and that depends on your body size and range and, and um, weight and height and arm length and leg length and <clears throat> a bunch of details around the body and angles that your body can contort to or not. Um, and you know how long you can be in those positions. So you can, you know, just from a, we'll say, you know, a strength example, uh, if, if your, your arm's in a position where it's outstretched um, um, and, and awkward, the amount of strength that, that you can apply to the steering wheel to make a turn is a lot less than um, it, it is with it's closer to your body. Uh, but there's a trade-off between that and getting in and out of the vehicle. Um, the, the foam in the seat, the shape of the lumbar, um, the angle of the pedals, the rotation of your ankle, um, lots of things. There's lots of details. There's lots of books out there on engineering ergonomics. Um, and... Um, all in, I encourage you guys to, to uh, look some of that up and find out some more information because um, it, it really isn't super complex uh, or, or challenging. All right, <clears throat> I'll come back to some of these questions type in the chat. Um, so tip for success, documentation is key. Uh, so basically you should start uh, preparing for the design event as soon as you start designing your car. Cause that's the intent of following the engineering product development cycle. Um, if you start following the cycle, um, by the time you get to the end, your car is built, and if you've been documenting all the all the way along, you don't have to do a bunch of extra work at the end. You're just combining, you know, putting your documentation together. Um, laptops, tablets, binders, posters, all those are okay to bring to the um, <coughs> design event. Um, when I say they're okay, like you need to, you need to bring one of those things at least uh, because as this ne next line says, if you don't show us anything, it's tough to give you any points. So if you show up to the design event um, and say you did a bunch of analysis work, but you don't show any of it, uh, trust can only take us so far. So you have to bring something, show us something. Um, Um, start with the basics. Uh, don't don't uh, jump all the way to you know super complicated analysis 
without understanding the basic, you know, fundamental engineering principles. Um, the more you understand the basics, the better you can critique your analysis and ensure that the parameters make sense. Excuse me. Um, prepare, practice, and manage your time. So we gave you 20 minutes to describe a whole year's worth, a whole year's worth of work. That's not much time. So have a plan, outline it, um, and, and make sure that, that you're able to cover all the aspects of the product amount cycle for each subsystem. So um, an area that is always difficult uh, for students that don't have a plan is suspension steering brakes. Uh, you spend about, I mean, this is fairly typical. You spend about 50% of the time on um, suspension, 49% uh, of the time on steering, and about 30 seconds on brakes. Um, but it turns out brakes is only worth one point less than those other two subsystems. So make sure you're able to spend as much time and brakes as as you do on suspension steering. Um, uh, make sure that uh, you have at least a team member to talk to each judge. And um, <clears throat> that includes making sure that somebody to talk to the bail leader. That's 35 points. And um, that's a really important part of the design evaluation. Uh, it's typically a team captain for the teams that are successful. Um, it doesn't have to know everything, but they have to know a lot about the vehicle. And if there's questions that the um, bay leader has that uh, the student can answer, can surely and you know hand it off to somebody else um, uh, to answer those questions. Uh, the last one on this line is is fail often. So, <clears throat> um, this is maybe counterintuitive, but you typically learn a lot more from failures than successes. And this is especially true in product development. You know, a lot of times you, you don't know where the limit is until you break it, uh, especially in a race car like this uh, Baja car. Um, Break some parts. Uh, you can learn from it, push the envelope, understand where the weak points are, and redesign. Um, now, you don't want that failure to occur on the endurance race or some dynamic event. You want to do that in, in your development. So um, it's probably fail often, fail early, so you're not failing at the end. All right, um, keep enrolling here. Some statistics on the virtual design event. Uh, 123 teams participated. So thanks for everybody that participated. Um, it was uh, a pretty good turnout and uh, I hope everybody that participated learned a lot. Uh, there were around 84 volunteers that worked on the design event and over 1,200 volunteer hours. So uh, this was a big deal. Um, we spent uh, a lot of time on the virtual design event. Um, so again, thanks for everybody that participated uh, and, and thank, thank those uh, design volunteers, um, design judges that, that spent um, many evenings um, and afternoons helping you guys. 43 teams um, had four-wheel drive and participated in the virtual design event. Um, and, and just a few less than that actually partook in the four-wheel drive evaluations.
Um, <clears throat> a couple things on uh, four wheel drive. So uh, as noted um, by SD.net when this whole virtual thing came out is uh, the rules and bonus points will be essentially the same as they were in 2020. Uh, we may tweak some things. Um, we definitely learned some things in design this this year that uh, we need to uh, investigate. Uh, the bonus points are listed there. 70 points for uh, the design event and the functional check and then 20 points for each dynamic event that you enter. So um, I had some questions on this. This functional check you know, will be on a set of rollers like roller conveyor rollers. Um, and um, that means like it's not just up in the air on jack stands and spinning the, the tires in the air. It actually has to spin the rollers. 